What's going on, everyone? Davis right here with your WrestleMania Night 2 recap. Uh, my apologies for being a couple days late. Uh, Monday had uh, a thing uh, with my grandfather out here in Michigan. Um, had to take him to a couple of do doctor's appointments and whatnot, so couldn't get it done there. And I've since uh, fallen a bit under the weather. Not COVID. Trust me, not COVID. Just a cold. It's been passed around the house. The wife had it. The kid had it. Now I've got it. Take a drink on camera. That's a good idea. Um, <laughs> so my apologies for being a couple days late here, but I did want to give the recap and how my predictions went uh, for night two. Uh, we kicked off night two with The Fiend versus Randy Orton. Uh, I put on Facebook that I thought The Fiend's entrance was the best since uh, Rusev in the tank. I thought it was a great entrance, uh, just popping out of the jack-in-the-box. That was uh, that was pretty awesome. The match, however, kind of sucked. <laughs> um, it was just uh, your basic wrestling match. No stipulations. Uh, like I said in my predictions um, video, that uh, there was a rumor that it was going to be a Firefly Funhouse match, but that was not to be. So, Randy Orton picks up the victory after Alexa Bliss comes out of the jack-in-the-box, has the black stuff running down her face, clearly coming out of her headband that she was wearing, um, and uh, distracted the Fiend, and Fiend uh, took an RKO, one, one RKO, and the Fiend goes down for the one, two, three, Orton with the victory there. Uh, so I was wrong on that one. Um... I was a little disappointed by this match. They had a lot of build com coming up to this match, and it uh, I feel like it just didn't deliver. Um, that being said, uh, I'm interested to see what they do now with The Fiend and Alexa Bliss. Uh, looks like that's going to continue, and Orton is on to bigger and better, perhaps. So... Uh, second match of the night, and pardon me if I get these out of order, uh, because I don't have it in front of me, but I believe the second match of the night was the women's tag title match, uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler against Natalia and Tamina, and, um, pretty decent match. Uh, all four women worked pretty well. Uh, Shayna damn near took Natalia's head off with a running knee. Uh, that was good to see. Natalia actually posted on social media that she had a cut under her lip because of it. Um, so Shayna and Nia um, retain the titles here. They uh, pick up the victory against Natalia and Tamina. So I am one and one with my predictions. Uh, I believe Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn up next. Uh, Logan Paul, I believe that's his name. Apparently, he's got 23 million YouTube followers. I didn't know that. I don't know who the guy is. Excuse me. My voice is going. Um, but Logan Paul was an invited guest of Sami Zayn. This match, as always, when these two get together, delivered. Uh, great matchup between the two. Um, stiff competition for match of the weekend between them and uh, Cesaro and Rollins. I would give the nod to Cesaro and Rollins, but why does it look like my camera's moving? It is. Okay, sorry about that. I think I was just about to lose you. Uh, Cesaro and Rollins, I think, would get match of the weekend, but um, Owens and Zayn put on one hell of a fight. I thought it was an excellent match, and um, Owens with a the victory there. So, picked up a win on my end with that one. Uh, the Intercontinental Championship match between Big E and Apollo Crews. A, um, you know what, I'm just going to hold this now. A Nigerian drum fight. Um, I said that Big E was going to come out on top and it looked like he was going to at the end. Uh, hit the big ending, and then all of a sudden, Daba Kato comes out of nowhere, dressed as some sort of renegade militant. Um, and I love how the commentary team 
played off like they didn't know who he was. Like, uh, I know we all are trying to forget Raw Underground, but it was a thing, and that's where Dabakato came from. So, um, that is uh, what happened. Dabakato comes out, takes out Big E, and uh, Apollo Crews picks up the Intercontinental Championship. Um, another decent match. This was basically a street fight. It started out with kendo sticks and and uh, tables and drums or actual physical drums at um, at ringside uh good match good fight uh it was good to see some sort of shenanigans uh during the procession of uh wrestlemania i thought it was uh interesting to see dabakato come out and and cause the uh the interference there and again i don't know why the commentary team <laughs> uh, played it off like they didn't know who he was but that's uh, what Vince tells them to do so they do it uh, women's championship match uh, Raw women's title Asuka versus Rhea Ripley another hell of a fight uh, between these two and just one of the better matches of night two of Wrestlemania uh, Rhea Ripley picks up the win, picks up the Raw women's title. Asuka, no, I credit Cultaholic with this stat because this is where I heard it. But um, Asuka is 0-4 at WrestleMania. And Sasha Banks is now 0-6 at WrestleMania. Um, very surprised to hear that stat. But uh, but it's it's true. Neither of them have picked up a win at WrestleMania, so uh, these two uh, dropping their respective titles to um, relative newcomers to the uh, main ro main roster. I know NXT is a third brand and not considering it the uh, de developmental anymore. But uh, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair holding the women's titles on Raw and SmackDown. Um, definitely good for the company, I think. I think it's a, a good, good, um, good move by the company to put the straps on those two. Uh, U.S. title match. A lot of th title matches on night two. Uh, Riddle defended against Sheamus. Uh, Riddle, I'm not a huge fan of. I just, I don't get it. And since they've added the birds coming out of his feet when he kicks off his flip-flops, I, I don't know what the hell's going on there. But um, funny little backstage uh, before the match, backstage segment with uh, Riddle, Kali, and Rob Van Dam. Van Dam pushing his rolling papers. Very nice to, uh, <laughs> to see that. Uh, but good to see Rob Van Dam still in shape, still wrestles from time to time. And... Uh, the match itself, pretty decent. Uh, almost had a disaster with Sheamus going for white noise from the top rope. But, I mean, give it up for him. The strength that he has to be able to land on his feet, first of all, with Riddle on his back, and then hit white noise from the mat. It was just a great show of strength and a great save, really. I mean, that could have been disastrous. So, um, At the end, though, uh, Sheamus picks up the United States Championship. Riddle loses... Uh, the title fairly quickly, only had it for a few weeks, but uh, I think Sheamus being the U.S. champ is uh, another good move. I think it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here on Raw. And uh, let's see, I believe the only match left is the main event of WrestleMania Night 2. It was Roman Reigns defending the U.S., the U.S., the Universal Championship against both Edge and Daniel Bryan. Uh, this was a, another really good match, I thought. I thought it was uh, good back and forth by all three. Um, but in the end, Roman Reigns, as I predicted, comes out on top, pins actually both men. There's a lot of controversy, and it might be actually written in the storyline that... Um, Edge pinned Daniel Bryan because he was on top, and then Reigns covered them both. Referee said all four shoulders were down, so he counted all four shoulders, and referee's decision is final, according to Charles Robinson. So um, 
be on the lookout for a little continuation of that on SmackDown this Friday. But Roman Reigns walks out of WrestleMania with the Universal Championship. And all in all, decent second night. First night was better, uh, in my opinion. But the second night was really good. The the first match of the night, nah, uh, kind of put a damper on uh, the rest of the evening. But um, I thought it was a good night. thought it was a great weekend of... Uh, of action. I thought uh, everybody came out to deliver. I'm sure having a live crowd there and not looking at TV screens um, with faces way too up close like this um, definitely helped the uh, the talent over the weekend. So it was great to see that. And uh, hopefully with pay-per-views in the future, they'll uh, they'll be able to have a live crowd inside of an arena. Uh, right now, they are back in the Thunderdome. Now they are on the campus of the University of South Florida. Their contract ran up with uh, Tropicana Field, obviously because the baseball season started. So the uh, Tampa Bay Rays are in there. So they are at the um, one of the arenas on the campus of the U University of South Florida. And uh, we'll see how long this lasts. Hopefully they're back to arenas with some sort of capacity. And that, uh, that'll that wrap things up. Uh, let me know what you think of these videos. Uh, like, comment, share it if you don't mind. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And uh, we will see you for WrestleMania Backlash. Until then, this is Davis Wright. So long.